Yeah, I think mom and I raised some good kids. Isn't that so nice of mom that she could help out, you know? Yeah, I think so too. What would you do for fun when you were in South Carolina? Well, I had a friend and we go we do a lot, a lot of things like we play a lot of sports, football, basketball, baseball. Yeah. We had school, we uh, we went to the movies once in a while because we could take the city bus because we couldn't drive, but we'd take the city bus down where the movie theaters are and go to movies. Yeah. And uh, I was kind of lonely. My best friend Tommy was real slow, you know, and you, you, could, you, know, you really couldn't have a conversation with him. Or you could, but he was just, he was boring to be around because he was so low, so. Why was he your best friend then? Because he was the only person that played with me and uh, he lived right across the street. And I worked, I tried to get other friends, but I just never, never had many. You weren't popular? I was not popular. Well, no. Now, the thing was, junior high was bad. And then freshman high school got a little bit better. Sophomore got a lot better. Third got a lot more. And fourth, I was pretty okay with it. You were still in South Carolina. Oh, then. no, I was out here. I moved here in seventh grade. Yeah. And I just, my junior high is such a rough time compared to high school, you know? Yeah. Well, you moved here at a, like, well, we had a to, weird age. We had to move while John was still living. Yeah. So we didn't have any. Yeah, I'm glad you guys moved. Yeah, I like it better here. Of course, I don't remember my, my years back there. I did have cousins that I played with. But for the most part, I didn't have too many friends, you know. And then we moved out here in my first year, and I just had a kid named Greg Peterson who we, we played sports together, and but he was kind of dumb too. When it comes to Tommy, but uh, he was just, I don't know, we just never really were great close friends. But moved out here, my first good friend was Joe Fleischel, and he was a Mormon. Yeah. And Grandma ruined that relationship. Yeah, what'd he do? Well, John was driving. He was just 16, but he was driving, and Joe and I went out to the golf course, and his dad was real strict, and he told him, you know, if he was five minutes late, he really caught it. So we, John was going to pick us up. He never came, you know? Yeah. I mean, he did, I, wrong. He, he did come, but he was about 20 minutes late because they kept him over late at, at his job. So we got there, and um, he, he just, man, just burst passed his son and said, you are a bad influence on my son. I don't want you around him again. Why'd she think he was a bad influence? Well, he was one really of the moms of dad. He was just a tyrant and uh, he he didn't like the idea that Joe was, he, he kind of acted like Joe was disobeying him, but I tried to explain to him and he wouldn't listen. So I went home and I was mad and uh, I was talking to, John about it. Mom overheard and she said, what, what happened? I said, oh, Mr. Joe's dad just jumped on me again. And I said, he does it all. I said, he does it. This, I'm used to it. She said, I'm going to call him. No, call him mom. Yeah. And uh, she she called him and of course she was mad and he was mad. They both yelled at each other and he slammed the phone. He hung up on her and she was mad. She goes, uh, I said, mom, what, you, what did you do that for? I said that she says, oh, I don't care. I said, no, I know you don't care. Joe's not your friend. Yeah. And then she apologized, but he wouldn't take her call. She tried to call back and settle it down, but he wouldn't. Yeah. And so Joe couldn't go out, out with me unless it was other people or, you know, either her dad didn't know for whatever reason, but he was always worried about being late or if he said anything, to his dad would get mad. And he was an older man. He was probably in his 70s. But that's no excuse because I'm in my 70s and I don't treat people yeah. like that. What's that before the aardvarks? Yo, yeah, that was eight, seventh, and eighth grade. Aardvarks yeah. started uh, 10th grade or 11th grade. No, 10th grade. Yeah. yeah before, I, before I started the aardvarks, I met Mark, and Mark was my best friend. And then we, 
we all formed at our parks. When did you learn to play the guitar? Well, I learned the basics at, through MYF, the Methodist Youth Fellowship. They, they had, after the service, they had time for just the teenagers to hang out. And I was about a sophomore. Yeah. And uh, this guy, Steve Wilson, he was a senior and he taught me how to play. How to hold my hand and everything and we practiced and eventually I got a guitar of my own to practice and I got quite good. How old were you? When I first got it, I was a sophomore, about uh, 15, 16. Yeah. That was a long time ago. That was, a, nah, that was it seems like just the other day. But I was lucky, I had, I had, even though I was lonely a lot, I think I had a lot more uh, socializing than any of my brothers. Yeah. John especially, he just sat home all the time and he was sick sometimes, but I can't, I couldn't honestly think of that one person that John had as a friend. And then, uh, Oh, he probably didn't get to, well, you he, know, form a lot of friendships. No, didn't have a friend. And Tom was, Tom was popular. He was the only one of us that was popular because he was a good athlete, and, you know, and yeah. The thing was that, uh, okay, but I, I didn't want to sit home. They, they made fun of me because I went to our church youth group, but we did a lot of things, you know. We went up yeah. to the Methodist, you, you've been at Methodist camp up in the Mingus Mountain. We got to go yeah. up there when it was icy, snowing and everything. And what did we you got, do? We had people from other chapters up around the state met and we had, you know, prayers and workshops and dances sometimes and just, it was a, just an experience thing. The thing was, we, my class was really, the kids in my class were really active, you know? And we had, like, I me our membership at my was about 30, and after we left, it dropped down to about seven or eight, and it closed down. Oh, wow. That's funny. Yeah, well, you, you were pretty active socially. Yeah. I went to parties and I went to dances and I kept pretty busy. Yeah. That's what I wanted. Tom had a pretty active social life, but he didn't really have a lot of social skills. It's just that everybody played up to him, you know? Yeah. And my my was the closest to acting the way I did, you know. Yeah. Did he have a friend group? Huh? Did he have a friend group? Yeah. Uh, not too much. He he did some, but none of the three of them have any friends that from, left over from high school, you know. And I still yeah. do. Mark, Ed, Jim, Joe, Joey, Ronald, uh, Richard. You know, I haven't talked to a lot of them in a while. Yeah. I thought you talked to Jody. I try to call him, but I can't get through him. But now you say it, I ought to see if I can call his brother. Because okay. I'm worried because. Uh, Last time he called me, I was there, but I couldn't get the phone in time. <laughs> and I don't remember him saying anything. He said, give me a call, Bob. He's doing okay. He commented on one of my Facebook oh, posts. Oh, good. When was the last time you talked to him? What? When was the last time you saw a message from him? Uh, I don't know when it was like. I think it's my turn to call him, so maybe he's just waiting for me to call. Although yeah. I've tried. Try again. All right, I'll do it. But you don't got a phone right now. I do, I ain't got a charger. Your phone's dead though. It ain't broke. <laughs> right now it's broke. You a stink pot what you is. Uh -huh. yeah. 
Uh, that little Charlie horse dog is stinks like too. <laughs> And when did you apply the ASU? Oh, sometime during my senior year. Why did you choose ASU? Well, I didn't. I thought Flagstaff was going to be too cold. My the artwork is pretty much split right down the middle, so about half went to ASU, half went to NAU. Yeah. But John went there, so I kind of started following him. And it came down to really two schools. Uh, ASU or NAU, and I decided, well, I have a brother down there, and it's not so freezing cold, and that's the move I made. At first, I kind of re regretted it, because the, the art parks that went to NAU were a lot more active than the ones in uh, ASU. Yeah. But uh, I think it worked out for the best. Yeah. You could have gone to Yavapai. Yavapai was not in, in existence. Oh. I think they might have started building on it that year. I remember the the guy, the president of the new school, they started building it was named James Cargill. Yeah. And he had a son who was a year younger than me. It was, God, he was so, I felt bad for him. He was ugly, one of the ugliest people I've ever seen. Yeah. And he was kind of withdrawn, even though his dad was, you know, so the school president. Yeah. And uh, one day I was walking over to Richards to, after the big snow, the roads were all icy. And I saw James Cargill, and I was walking to Richards' house and I hit an ice spot with my foot. And I my, I spit a slide, my feet went up over my head and I slammed up my back on the ground. And I was pretty, it was lucky I didn't break anything. Yeah. And he just stood there and watched me. And I mean, I had to get up and, you know, I didn't think anybody would run over and see if you're okay, because it was a hard fall. He just stood there and watched me and I got up and I said, Hi James, he said hi. <laughs> he was, I guess he was real smart, but had no social skills. Yeah. So they were only there for a, a year, I think. Yeah. Maybe two, because his dad got fired as president. They oh built, they, really? Well, they misled all the people in Prescott. They, Prescott didn't have a college or a junior college, and a lot of Prescott kids could not afford to come to ASU or U of A or NAU. So they said they're going to start having a, a junior college here. It, it's main, aimed mainly at Prescott residents, you know, to help people that live in Prescott to go, not have to live at home, be able to live at home and all those things. Well, Cargill came in as manager. He said, that's not the way it's going to be. This is going to be an elite social school that uh, it's going to have the best students in the nation. We're going to be the Harvard of the West. Yeah. Well, that's not what we were told. We were told this was to help the poor kids in Prescott, not to bring in these elite, expensive. Yeah, and what they did, the first year they brought in a lot of actors and actresses, kids that were incorrigible. Like, you, you know Matt Dillon? No. Gunsmoke? You know, if you saw, well, he, he was a star of Gunsmoke. His son, who was a real problem, was sent, it's like a reform school. So we had all these rich kids that were kind of, problems you know which is not what a lot of people we gave them a pledge we didn't honor it because they went back on what they had promised us you know yeah. and uh it became just a very small little weird college that you, you could major in mountain climbing or raft riding you know it's just it was almost like a, a nursery school for rich kids kid, rich people's kids yeah. and we got a lot of problems there's a lot of fist fights between prescott residents and Prescott Valley, Prescott College residents. Yeah. And one reason they left was because they were kind of getting their butt kicked. There were nobody like to see them around because they, they were problems. They they'd drive real fast and honk their horn at you and try to start problems. Yeah. The owner I remember was his name was Matt Matt Arnett Arnest was his last name, and he was kind of the worst ones because his dad did no parenting at all. Yeah. And uh, so. Prescott Valley could have been a really nice junior college, like we got Phoenix College and you know Glendale Junior College. So yeah. it could have been Prescott Junior College, and it could have catered to the Prescott residents. It would have been a really win-win deal. You know, we could have got uh, plenty of people that want to go to Prescott because they can't afford to go anyplace else. Yeah, good kids, you know, and they would have had that, and then Prescott College would have been able to grow and. So just the one guy that really screwed it up. 
Yeah, yes, and make this as elite, really expensive college where we only get really top students and all that. That's not what we were told. We were told the exact opposite that we're taking, we were looking for kids that academically were, were sound. They didn't have to be the top of the class, so that needed the financial assistance yeah. of having your, you know, because if you get your, they let your room there for a very low price or free. And you spend your money on other things. A lot of kids, a lot of people couldn't. They couldn't make it. At any U or ASU or U of A, could make it there financially. And then you met uh, Jody at. It came. It came in about. They finished it about two years after I was had started ASU, but there was no way I was moving on there. It was you know, it was yeah. like hippies starting to the hippies, you know, and uh, that's my story. And then you met Jody at ASU. Mm -hmm. First day. It was not even first day. It was orientation. Orientation is where you go and they tell you what you're going to do and you fill out your request course cards and ask for the yeah. classes you want. And uh, so they had all the freshmen going that Grady Gamis Auditorium and I didn't know anybody because it was you know my buddies had gone at different times and. I sat down and Jody sat down beside me and we just started talking and we went and had lunch together and the rest is history. And you copied his... Uh, no, he copied mine. I... Oh. Jody was not very sharp. And he knew it. He, he, he's smart now. He just kind of took a while, but back then I was definitely the smarter of the two. And you wanted... You chose teaching? I chose teaching, I chose engineering or uh, uh, social studies history first. And the first day we went there, the guy said, how many of you want to teach history? Nobody raised their hand. He goes, well, let me tell you what, there's only two jobs for his history. Historians, like at museums and places like that, he said, extremely hard to get and they don't pay much for teaching it. If you don't want to teach history, you need to withdraw from this class. So I withdrew and I had to find out what I wanted for major. So, you can always change it, but you have to have it declared before you start school. So I, uh, Jody went with me and we both changed our schedules so that they had max, he didn't care. He, his parents wanted him in college and he didn't care. So uh, I took first year education. And he taught, he copied it and we had the exact, all the same I classes first semester. I thought you semester. copied his because... No, I did not copy his. Uh -huh. You thought wrong. I just thought you didn't understand. There was nothing that I didn't understand. Jody didn't understand. And uh, he did, Jody was not, didn't have a lot of friends, I think, so he kind of enjoyed, he kind of rode on my coattails, but a lot of the guys from Prescott didn't like him, so. <laughs> yeah. I had to kind of and, balance it. And then you met that, um, that guy in the dorm who looked like we'd take lots of showers. Charlie Pucci. Yeah. Who'd you run with your first year? My best friend, Mark. Yeah. You've met Mark, I don't know if you remember. He came over and helped me move to, a, oh, I maybe you didn't come down. You might not have met him. Oh yeah, I met him. Was he your friend before you were roommate? Yeah, that's why we chose each other. You could request who you wanted to room with, and so we requested each other. And we lived together for a year, and I was I didn't like the dorm living, so the next year I, I was trying to find somebody to go live with me, and Mark didn't want to look for a place because he wanted to go back to the dorm because it was cheap. And yeah. uh, so I had to find two others, and the only ones I found were Jonathan John and his best friend, Frank Kristoff. They were both older than me, and they, they treated me like a little kid, pissed me yeah. off. So the next year, I didn't want a room with John. Hi. So John and Frank roomed together, and they added a guy named Dave. You're fine. Phillip. It's okay. Did they ever? Did you? Is that red pill get taken, Molly? Uh, yeah. yeah. She said she put it somewhere. Because we weren't sure if we should take it or not. No. Don't take it. Don't. Okay. Don't take it. I don't even know where it is. I thought it was right here. It's right there. Is it, you see it? Yeah, I see it. Ugh, it's up there. Oh, you're fine. 
Sorry. Here. Your thing's still going. I'm not. I'm just not sure what pill this is. So. It's, I think it's amethadine, matadine, or whatever you say it. What is that pill for? It is to it is to counteract my uh, side effects from carbo levodopa. Do you understand that? Uh, yeah, but what side effects? The clink, the uh, eye the problem, and the shaking in my hands. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna be getting another one tonight. Right. Yes. So you just discard this one. Yeah, that's fine. So your blood pressure was pretty high. Yeah, I think it was like 176 right now. Yeah. We give you meds to bring it up. Then we bring give you meds to bring it down. Yeah. You scan yet. So I'm gonna give you hydrolazine, it should help to bring it down. Because okay. we don't want it to be that high. Hey, is it going out of drip? No, it's a pill. Oh the pill. So, would you say the earliest he'll be discharged is <coughs> Monday? I don't think she can make that statement. Saturday, today's Saturday. There's a possibility if tomorrow, um, if he's medically cleared and his orthostatics come yeah. back okay, then they'll probably then they'll can start working on getting him to uh, SNP. Do you know exactly what, when I say medically cleared, what's stopping that from going through? What am I, is, what is the problem? The orthostatic. Oh, so there's, looks, they're, yeah. they're, 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 they're the same thing then. The orthostatic is the thing that I need to get corrected. Yeah, get, so okay. that's, that's, the, that's the thing we're waiting on. Okay, thanks. Yeah. We don't want you to go like that. No, I understand. It's not very safe. All right, I you know. understand. I also got um, laxatives. Mm -hmm. You want to take those? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll put them in the water. You know what people said to me on the phone, Molly? They said, how's your trip? Yeah. See you next fall. Yeah. You think you're funny? I know I'm funny. Did you bring your walker? No, did not. They have they have one here though that I can use till I get home. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay, sit up. Okay. Yeah, my eyes are kind of screwed. I'm gonna exchange your batteries. Can I lay back or not? Thank you. 